Hello and welcome everyone to this video. What's one of our favorite meals? Burritos! Burritos! Yes, burritos is one of our favorite meals to make. And so what do you need to make burritos? Beans, rice, yogurt, cheese. Most people use sour cream. We just happen to mm -hmm. use yogurt. Um, that's pretty much all we put on ours. Some so hot sauce. We don't even put on meat, so. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we do, but. Our guests are over. The beans are kind of, kind of the, I don't want to say the heart of it, but kind of the heart of it. So what you got to do is maximize your ingredients. Uh-huh. So we make our own, our own black beans. That's what we're going to make today. Um, the way I make them. We put them in the pressure cooker or is well, it a slow cooker? I don't you know. You can do it either way, but do you like the beans? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe the recipe is the difference. That's what we'll. We'll find out maybe, but um, I gotta go get the beans. I forgot the beans. Oh, okay. Should I turn the video off? Can't do much without beans. Mm-hmm. Beans are kind of the healthy part of the burritos. Now that you've got the beans, I'm gonna say something. Without the beans, you can't do very much but mix a bunch of spices and onions and things together and it wouldn't taste like beans either. Diner. Put a link for that. So on the bag, it actually tells you to uh, look for if there's any pebbles or anything like that in here because they, these are basically, I think they're machine sorted. I've only ever, like in 10 years of making my own beans, cooking my own beans, I've only ever found like a pebble in there like once, literally once in 10 years. I so, found um, a shriveled one. Yep, yeah, but you do, like if you find a like, shriveled one or something like that, or if you find like a funky looking one, just take it out. But um, hey, I'd be shocked. I, think I found a shell. Yeah, and that's just half a bean. So um, I'd be shocked if I, you know, if there was anything in here. But I don't see anything. But you just want to double check. I've just for like, like that one in a thousand chance that you. Machine but sorted. I don't see any, so we're gonna rinse these out under the sink in this uh, spaghetti okay. colander spaghetti? strainer thing. Yep, pasta strainer. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna get one medium onion and chop it. Now this is actually a half a one. Kind of a half of a big onion, which is like good enough. You could honestly, you could use a whole big onion. That'd be totally fine. The more onion, that looks easy. The more onion, kind of the better. So don't worry about too much. Don't worry about using too much. That looks easy. Watch out, Daddy. Do you really want to try one? I, I've tried one before. Can I try one too? Hmm. I actually have my eye on Spicy. I just kind of do a... Daddy's favorite thing to do. Now these don't have to be like super finely diced because I'm going to use a pressure cooker and even if you use a slow cooker, I mean these are just going to kind of melt away. Just Kind of do a loose chop, it's just fine. So now, get this Instapot going. Or if you're using a slow cooker, get that going. Uh, okay, and I'm gonna put this on the saute mode. Saute? Yep. What's that? That's like when you fry stuff. Oh. We're gonna put some, we're gonna put some oil? oil in there. I'm just gonna dump the onions right in there. Into the pot. One time Daddy put up an apple with a butcher knife and it, yeah, cut it up with <laughs> onion. <laughs> yeah, I sometimes I cut it up with daddy's knife, and, <laughs> and then my apple tastes like it has onion in it. <laughs> Actually, that happens quite frequently when daddy cuts up an apple with his. Okay, so you want to use a head of garlic. I actually just have frozen right now, unfortunately. But. They're sticky. Just kind of loosely chop them. They'll cook down and turn all, you know, they won't. You're not chopping barely any because they're on the sides. Yeah. And then I'm going to slide that into the pot. I put the onions in there and turn it on. It's going pretty strong, Ooh. so. Uh-huh. want this to get all nice and brown and as caramelized as you can. Caramelized? Yep. That's what it's called when they get all brown. And now here's the secret to the bean process. 
one. Frozen pork fat, okay? I didn't say these were vegetarian beans. So what I have here is this may not look the most appetizing, but mm -hmm. this is a bag of frozen pork fat and uh, there's some steak fat on there too. And basically whenever I cook up a roast or some steaks, I'll cut off the fat and uh, put it in this bag and leave it in the freezer. And my wife loves that. Nah. Um, but I just save it for when I'm making beans because I'm gonna throw this in there and it's gonna make these beans taste awesome. So, Ooh, steamy. Here we go. Having a little trouble. Okay. okay. There might even be some chicken in there, I don't know. That's a uh, ham. I think there's some ham in there. That's the best if you need to have ham. Oh, there's a kind of different fat. Throw everything in. Yep. They're a lot darker once you wash them. So remember the beans? There they go. They're all nice and washed off now. So we are going to dump them in. Inside the little bowl. Let all this kind of get together here. Let that saute for a little bit longer. Now let's get some spices. Six or seven crackles of pepper. We'll get a tablespoon of cumin. Yep, and uh, if you're a little adventurous, you can go for like a half, an extra half. That looks good. Good tablespoon of coriander. Smells mm. good. Now I've got oregano. Just a whole bunch of that. Throw in some garlic salt. By the way, if you don't have real garlic, uh, you can use powdered garlic. I recommend like a one and a half tablespoon of garlic powder, or you can add both. You want to add some chili powder. Give this a good mix. Now this is all getting kind of thick in here, so I want to deglaze the bottom. So I've got two cups of water here. That really quiets things down. And then you kind of scrape up the bottom there. You can see these pieces of steak in there. That's gonna be pretty nice. Okay, so I just added two more cups of water, two tablespoons of lime juice, mm. and so that's about it. I will say that if you have some trouble with like following the recipe or knowing what to put in it or whatever, um, just use some taco seasoning, like a whole bunch of taco seasoning. That'll work too. For everything? Yeah, it works on meat, it'll work on beans. It's smelling good already. I wish so, humans could smell. Okay, so that's smelling good. So let's put this lid on here. So we're using the bean setting. So I'm going to put this on bean mode. And I'm going to put that on 25 minutes. Although it's really just... You're just using the pressure setting. If you're using a slow cooker, you want to plan for like four or five hours, depending on what setting, uh, high or low, you're going to use. But the advantage too, if you're using a slow cooker, is that you can actually just check it out and test it yourself for doneness. You can um, just take the lid off real easily compared to a pressure cooker, and you can taste it and see if it's the right consistency that you prefer for your beans. Get a little impatient and kind of help it out. Be careful when you open this. The moment of truth. Though it's a little watery, do you like strain it watery? or something? Well, when it's hot like this, it is watery. And um, when it cools down, they'll get absorbed back by the beans. Oh. So a lot of that water will go away. But now look how tender that is. I mean, that's that's some of that fat, some of that steak fat in there that I was talking about, the steak cuttings. I mean, Getting just... juicy. But the other thing you can do if, if you feel like you really have too much water, 
which is kind of what it turned out here. It's not really a big problem. Just turn on the saute setting. What saute? Is it French? I don't know. But, um... It's getting yeah. slowly less watery. Evaporating. That's what it does. And see, I've done this for a little while now. A little bit of a time lapse here. And see, check it out. Look how thick it's gotten now. Do you think this is a better consistency? Yeah. I thought it was going to be super soupy when you put in four cups of water. Yep. Yeah, me too. Uh, saute mode a little bit, and then it's cooled down a little bit now. So now it's the perfect consistency as far as I'm concerned. Actually, hopefully it's not too thick here, but um, I mean, this is, how does it smell? Beans! It smells like beans. So let me show you my secret which isn't secret because I tell people all the time, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these into ice cube trays. And then you can just pop them out for supper anytime. And you don't have to make the beans day before because you're going to have a ton of extras. Sometime we have to do a burrito video. So yeah, I only do this like this whole process maybe once a month, probably not even that depending on how big of a batch I make. But I just put these in the ice cube tray, I freeze them, then I'll put them into a gallon size freezer bag and store them in the freezer and just take them out on burrito night, microwave them. How much, how many cubes per person do you think you would pull out? Yeah, I'd say about two per person. Two to three, to be honest. I mean, it kind of depends. On you know, how much beans you like. Yeah, how much beans you like. Um, for the three of us, I usually pull out like six and then maybe two more. You can kind of figure it out yourself as you experiment Get into it. But so this is kind of like our um, basic routine. Yeah, it's this is kind of our like phase one of our burritos, which what? is like our ultimate kind of meal that someday I'll make a video on. Of course. Of course. There you have it. Um, I beans. didn't. I didn't say these were vegetarian beans, and they're not. And, and I'm glad they're not because they're so good. Right. We steal all the flavor from parts of meat that, that aren't used. That aren't used, and that nobody likes, anyways. But you know what? You just run it through the pressure cooker, and it works magic. You saw how tender it comes out. Yeah. It seems like the pressure cooker almost does magic. Oh yeah. Plus, the pressure cooker cooks the beans real fast. And by the way, if you do it in a slow cooker, that's totally fine too. It just... Cooks longer. You just let it cook all day while you're working or having Billing. fun or whatever you do. Just stir it every once in a while and same kind of thing. It's totally hands off. So, what I'd like everyone to do is go out and buy some dry beans and give this recipe a try. And we're going to put a link for pressure cookers. Yeah, we'll do that too. Let us know how it goes. If you got any questions or suggestions, or maybe you've got a tip for us, let us know in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching everyone. Goodbye. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to get the latest, best videos. And also, please ring the bell. Oh yes, of course.